Good morning and welcome to worship at Wellesley Mennonite Church. Whether you are worshiping here in person or online, welcome. We acknowledge with gratitude that we are worshiping on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and neutral peoples. As Anabaptists, we strive to walk in the ways of peace, reconciliation, and justice for all people in God's creation. On behalf of the MYF, please feel free to help yourself to refreshments and treats throughout the service and join us for Christian Ed following the service, which will entail more details about our trip to Camp Shiktahawk, New Brunswick. At that time, there will be an opportunity for members of the congregation to ask questions and we'll provide answers about what we did when our work out east. Um, at this time, I'd like to draw your attention to the info page that was sent out by email er earlier this week. Our call to worship this morning will be based on Psalm 103. I'll be reading for person one, and together as a congregation, we'll be reading for person two. The message should be projected onto the screen. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And do not forget all his benefits. He forgives our sins and shortcomings, and heals us inside and out. So let us give thanks today for the many blessings in our lives. Let us be grateful. Let us be generous and loving, good stewards of the treasures given to us. Let us find ways to bless others through the church, through personal relationships, and in every way we can. Let us be Good morning. Uh, I'd like to pray for this uh, gathering. Um, Eternal God, we pray that we will make stewardship a way of life. We acknowledge you as a source of all we, we have and all we are. Um, help us place you, our loving creator. Help, help us to place you, our loving creator, first in our lives, becoming more prayerful, more focused on loving and caring of our families and our neighbors in need and becoming less preoccupied with material things. Help us to hear your call to be good stewards, caretakers, and managers of all your gifts by sharing them for your purposes. Help us to make your priorities our priorities and to put our faith into action. Help us plan to give back the talents, treasures, and time which we have been blessed. Help us plan to serve our church, our community, and our world with your gifts. May we serve you and serve you and pray with a joyful spirit of heart and mind. Amen. And please stand for the, the song. Today's scripture reading is from Proverbs chapters 3, verses 5 to 6. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. He's the one who will keep you on track. And the second verse is Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 to 16. Here's another way to put it. You're here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light barriers, do you think I will hide you under a bucket? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I've put you there, on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll promote people to open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. On our first evening in New Brunswick, we were given a sheet which had a list of different skills and were asked to rate them on a scale from one to five. And for some reason, I put myself fairly high up on the painting scale, not really thinking much of it. And not surprisingly, the next morning, I was given the job of painting. <laughs> As a team, Talia, Donna, Megan and I scraped, primed and painted the majority of the week. I learned quickly that I didn't actually have that much painting experience, but with amazing leadership, I was able to learn quickly. Who knew all that went into painting? 
The good company and sounds of children laughing and playing by the pool made this job so much more enjoyable. It was also nice to help out with other projects such as shoveling concrete and scraping concrete and pulling rope through the fence at different points throughout the week. At the end of a long day, most of us, all most of us wanted to do was take a shower and go to bed, but it's amazing what a short rest and some dinner can do. Most nights we found ourselves swimming in the pool, zip lining, paddle boarding, sightseeing, or racing each other around the inflatable course on the pond. We also took some time each night to reflect on what we had learned that day and read letters from members of the congregation, which gave us a new boost of energy and hope for the next day. We thank each of you who took the time to write these words of encouragement or contributed to our trip in any way. I would also like to thank Donna and Brian for organizing and taking us on this trip. This was truly an incredible experience and I loved going into each day not quite knowing what we would be doing but ending the day feeling tired but rewarded. It was also really cool to see how the dynamic of our group changed as the week went on. Over the course of the week that I spent in New Brunswick, I learned about working and I also learned about friendship. I got to get closer with Marina and Talia while we spent hours painting the barn and pool shed. And I also learned that Donna is as tough as nails and could probably beat anyone here in an arm wrestle. <laughs> Something I'll never forget is the hot day after working where me, Marina, Talia, Dylan, Sam, and Jonas all jumped in the river and took turns pushing each other in when we least expected it. That lasted a good 20 minutes. <laughs> and I'll never forget the smiles and laughs and all of the fun times we had on our trip. So a big thank you to Donna, Brian, Anson, Ron, and Jim for making this trip possible. Unfortunately, Talia was unable to be here today, so I'll also be reading her reflection on her behalf. Talia says, my favorite part of the trip was getting to work around the campers while they were there for the first couple of days. During the time that we were there, the camp was running a mini overnight camp for young children ages five to seven, so they could experience camp in a small dose for the first time. In the three short days that they were there, it was amazing to see their excitement for camp, excitement to be at camp, and how curious they were. At times, the kids would even come up and ask us questions about the work we were doing, and even weighing in with their own suggestions at times. My favorite suggestion was, I think you should paint the shed pink. <laughs> Needless to say, we definitely missed the presence of the campers after they had left. We also got the opportunity to connect, to connect with both campers and counselors during mealtimes and dish duty. It was a great way to feel connected with the people we were serving. I also learned a lot from everyone, including Donna and one of our program coordinators, Anna. Our morning meetings before eating breakfast and starting work for the day gave me a chance to get a better understanding of the work we would be doing for the day, as well as a chance to connect with each other through song and scripture. Each of us took a turn to lead scripture or song, which was a great way for us to see each of our personalities show through. Overall, this experience was an excellent opportunity to be able to share our gifts and skills together, as well as to learn new ones. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. 1 Peter 4.10 During my week in New Brunswick, I got to learn a lot while getting to work with Ron. Uh, I learned how to build and reinforce concrete forming, how to pour and smoothen out the concrete, and how to take it all apart at the end of the day. We also got a good lesson about how to properly wear a hat, Jonas. <laughs> my favorite part of the week would have had to have been swimming in the river after uh, the hot day of work. and playing basketball with Jonas, uh, Sam and Megan in the barn that they spent so long painting. I would like to thank Donna and Brian for making it all possible and it was a lot of fun to go with that group. Uh, 
I learned a lot of things about my trip to New Brunswick. The first thing that I learned is it's good to set an alarm to wake up on time so you're not late almost every morning. The second thing that I learned is that you need a lot of food for a 15 hour drive and a lot of good music. The third thing I learned was that to never doubt Ron as he was usually right about everything. And finally, I learned this was a great opportunity and I would go again. And my favorite part was leaving my family for a whole week. Good morning, everybody. My name is Sam, and my favorite thing about New Brunswick was the really good food. However, two things to remember, bring, bring bug spray and take a plane. When I, was, when I was in New Brunswick, I did many things with my helper, Jim, like folding aluminum, building a deck, putting in flooring, and much more. Thanks, Donna and Brian, plus all the helpers in the congregation for all the support. Hi, my name is John, and my favorite part of the trip, MDS trip was the seven boxes. On the first day, me and my dad were told to make seven boxes. They were framing boxes, so you have to make them weak, but... Uh, we uh, kind of messed up the instructions. It took us an entire day to make the boxes. <laughs> and when they were done, they were very strong boxes. But on the third day, when we went to remove the boxes, we discovered that we made them way too strong for the job. <laughs> In the end, it all came down to just overthinking it. We thought too hard about how to make the boxes in the first place. And then by the end, we just made it too strong for the job. <laughs> I enjoyed the overall experience of the trip and would gladly do it again. Though, should not build seven boxes. See this place filled up today. It's nice. Two more tables had to be put up. Um, a trip like this does not happen without the support and prayers from all of you. The youth were given the opportuni opportunity to experience an MDS SYP, which is Mennonite Disaster Summer Youth Program, and not one of them were familiar with this type of trip. So yes, it was a whole new experience for them. Some of you wrote letters, like was mentioned before, and we read those letters each night, or you might have sent an email to us, just to let us know that you were thinking of us. Well, the letters were fun, as it became a game. The youth wanted to be able who, to guess who actually wrote the letters. So the first sentence wasn't even completed. And two of the youth kept guessing, Judy Wagler. <laughs> you probably know which two I'm talking about. <laughs> we are grateful for all your generous support in our fundraising efforts, through coffee times, and also a couple of you hired us to work around your homes. Thank you to the Schwarzendrubers and the Kipfers for allowing us to help bag firewood and do some trail cleanup. A special gift from the Missions Committee, who feel that trips like these are important. Our total fundraising ended up to be $2,300, over $2,300. Thank you to Pastor Kara, who encouraged us to go ahead with this trip. There are others who played important roles in the success of this trip. Those adults who drove us out to the camp, because someone had to get us there. Ron's truck, well, we could fill that up. And borrowing the Beckler's van, which we did bring it back in one piece. <laughs> Those adults with construction knowledge to get us through the week. The guys worked on a buddy system with an adult while the girls worked together, scraping and painting, scraping and painting, painting. Our IT guys, Anson and John. They took an awful lot of pictures, and they also put together all the pictures that we took from all the videos and the PowerPoints that you've been seeing throughout the morning. Our coordinators, David and Anna Weeb from Winnipeg, 
for sharing their knowledge. They retired early, and for the past 18 years, they have volunteered their time involved in this type of program. The parents, who had to play a major role in reading all my emails, which I sent out continuously regarding the trip, and to help out with those fundraising efforts, and to get their youth to and from events, and of course miss their youth while they were gone for a week. They were always there just to help to make things happen. The final thank you goes out to all the youth. They took a chance for this new experience. The opportunity was given to them, but they had to, it was up to them and how they would handle the opportunity. From not knowing much about MDS to learning more about it, what it's all about. Respond, rebuild, and restore. So a great big thank you to the congregation for making this trip possible. Should these trips be continued? Well, during the last leg of our very, very long drive home, Sam turns to me and says, Donna, the next time we go on a trip, <laughs> can we fly? <laughs> I will let you ponder that. Thank you. Well, I would like to invite all of our MDSers to come on up. <clears throat> come on up. <laughs> Thank you for the laughter this morning, for sure. And I'm sure with Donna along, there was lots of laughter all week. For those of us who experienced Camp Shakina a couple of years ago, that was fun. Um, Thank you for hosting us today, coffee and tea and all the food. But thank you for representing us so well, for taking the risk, for taking a week of your summer and going, building relationships, building community, serving, learning what it is to love God more deeply with all of our heart, mind, body, and spirit. So we want to thank you this morning for going. Transformation is our worship theme this fall, and opportunities to serve are always transformative. Over your years in MYF, you will always have mall hunts, ball games, movie nights, Winter Olympics, and all kinds of other things that the needs and others will dream up for you. And yet it seems to me that it's the experience of serving that is the most formative for our faith, that finds a place deep within us, deepening faith, impacting relationships, shaping how we see the world, and how good it is to leave the familiarity of home, even for the long drives, and experience firsthand that not all the world lives as we do. Now, this did not happen before you left for New Brunswick, so we want to take time on behalf of CARE Team to present each one of you with a CARE Team blanket, which are stitched with the words, wrapped in God's love. And this is not just to serve as a reminder of your time being held in the warmth of God's love as you served, but also a reminder that God holds all of the world in the warmth of God's embrace. So, a blanket for each one of you. And Donna, thank you very much. We're glad that you went along. Yeah. Um, Megan, if she might like the pink one. Do we have one pink one? I didn't know if if one of the girls would would like that one or not. Yeah. So may this blanket serve to remind you of your time away. And we look forward to more MDS trips in the future as uh, it becomes a little more safe to travel and be together in groups, how good it is to do that. And I think now that Donna and Brian are retired, maybe we'll see more of this. <laughs> we'll see. But thank you again from the bottom of our hearts. We'll let you have it.
and how good it is to hear your stories, your fun and your hard work too. Let's join our hearts and turn towards God in prayer. Spirit of transformation, we are grateful for the ways you inspire, disturb, and shape us through our experiences in the world and with one another. Open our eyes, soften our hearts, expand our minds, unravel our assumptions as you nurture personal growth, our individual callings, and deepened relationship with creation and one another. Help us to see the world through your eyes of compassion. Strengthen us to come alongside, support, and build strong com communities in which all are welcome, where justice is done and all have bread. Whether experiencing difference or experiencing the routine of every day, may our lives be open to your presence, active, moving, transforming our hearts and minds, and nurturing our growth and development as your disciples of healing and hope. Spirit of transformation, we pray for the world you love. We pray for creation groaning due to global warming and environmental destruction done at our hands. May we be healing and restorative stewards of your good creation. We pray for famine-stricken nations, nations at war, nations suffering due to corrupt political leadership. May we endeavor each day to walk in the shoes of peace, recognizing the world's pain is our pain. You are the God who brings new life from the ashes, streams to flow in the wilderness. May your kingdom come, your will for restoration be done in its fullness, we pray. Spirit of transformation, we pray for all who stand in need of healing for physical, emotional, or relational pain. Be with the sick, those living with chronic pain or physical limitations. Be with the lonely, long-term care residents who feel forgotten, and be with overburdened health care providers. We pray for those awaiting test results or appointments and those journeying cancer treatment. We pray for the discouraged, the heartbroken, and all who grieve. Spirit of transformation, we pray for the church. As we live into a new church year, may we live boldly and faithfully into your mission and vision. May ministries flourish relationships deepen, and may joy abound as we all learn and serve together, including this next weekend's Apple Butter and Cheese Festival. Listening God, we offer all of our prayers, those spoken aloud and those we carry deep in our hearts, all in the name of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. May the wisdom of the wonderful counselor direct you, the strength of the mighty God protect you, the love of the everlasting Father embrace you, the peace of the Prince of Peace surround you. Amen.
south Just my feet, my heart, the second ticking round I'm running for the sunset, but it's so far out of reach I'm running for the sunset, but I get stuck on the beach I see the girl I know, the prize when there are some things you can't teach Why'd you make the horizon? So far out of reach line is a jumpy So far out of reach Never been much good Cause I've never been much good Finish line is a jumping rope Jumping rope Jumping rope They're running up beside me But I don't see their face they're running up beside me, though. They're running in one place. They're running up beside me, reminds me of your grace. Are we running for the sunset, or is it just your face? Our kingdom's coming, he told us so when he came down. If you listen close with me, I bet you'll hear the sound of the whistle of a jump rope coming back around. Finish line is a jumping rope. I've never been much good. Never been much good. Please feel free to help yourself to more coffee and goodies. Um, we'll take a bit of a break before we head into the Christian Ed time, but thank you for coming out this morning. <laughs>